Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from LaRouche Pack with your daily update for today, September 24th, 2020. The topic for today is how psychological warfare is being used against the American people to manipulate them to support the policy of endless wars. If you've been paying attention, the last couple of days there have been some fairly extraordinary presentations given at the UN General Assembly meeting in New York City. It's the 75th anniversary of the founding of the United Nations, and a number of leaders are using the opportunity to call for unified action and solidarity of all nations, large and small, to address the crises that we have facing us now, whether it's the coronavirus pandemic, the famine that's spreading throughout the world, the uh, breakdown of, of nations, the uh, in, in the United States, you have armed insurrection virtually in the streets and a threat for a, of a constitutional crisis with the coming election. So while you have governments speaking of collaboration, of dialogue, you have other forces that are pushing for chaos, polarization, and so on. And one of the points that we've been making is that the best way to address this uh, crisis is to have a summit or a series of summits between the great powers who will take up what are the common interests that we have, what are the problems we face together, and what actions can we take to address them. But instead of that, you have coming from the establishment forces that are largely tied to the international banks, the globalist forces, uh, pushing the trade agreements, pushing for an end to national sovereignty, what they're saying is that the existing order must be protected, and to protect it, you have to be prepared for new wars, including against Russia and China. So what I'm going to take a look at today is two aspects of the psychological warfare, one coming from Secretary of State Pompeo. And look, for those of you who think he's just a whipping boy for us, he is a front for the forces that want to sabotage President Trump's desire to end the endless wars. His job is to keep, to fan the flames of war, to look for the areas where there are disagreement and heighten them, and then play on the paranoia that, that's then engendered in the American population to create an enemy image so that huge defense budgets can be continued and deployment to new wars anywhere in the world will be supported. That's the job Pompeo is playing. Now, he gave a speech yesterday at the Wisconsin State Legislature, and I'm just going to read a couple quotes from it because this includes some of the most bizarre language we've heard in, in years going back to the time of Senator Joe McCarthy and the Red Scares in the 1950s. Uh, what Pompeo started was quoting President Xi Jinping. Uh, he said that President Xi called for actively developing cooperation with all countries, regions, and enterprises willing to cooperate with us, including states, localities, and enterprises inside the United States. Now, this is what Pompeo said is a sinister attempt to manipulate Americans while the Chinese are moving in to take us over. Listen to his language. He said, as Secretary of State and the former director of the CIA, let me translate. Now, before we get his translation, remember what he said. As the CIA, we lie, cheat, and steal. And he laughed after saying that. But listen to what he says now. Let me translate what Xi Jinping is really saying. He thinks local leaders may be the weak link in the United States, and that through them you can infiltrate America. He said, the Chinese Communist Party influence and espionage campaigns are not just targeting state-level officials. We've seen them at PTA meetings. Chinese communists trying to take over the parent-teacher associations in, in American schools? I'm surprised he didn't say, look under your bed. There's probably a Chinese communist agent under your bed. He, he went on to say, that they're working through U.S. embassies, through the deployment of students, through uh, cooperative um, uh, academic institutions. Uh, and they're doing this to undermine America on behalf of 
a Chinese communist world takeover. Now, one could ask him to what extent the Chinese are responsible for the existing problems in the United States. Did they industrialize our country? No. Did they create the huge deficits in the United States? No. Uh, are they responsible for Black Lives Matter? Well, some people say the Chinese communists fund them, but actually they're funded by American corporations and people like George Soros and the Ford Foundation. But he goes on to say, we need state legislature, le legislators to help the federal government police this predatory and coercive behavior. We need laws for counter infiltration. And he said, above all, beware of Chinese Americans. Now this is designed to make the American people paranoid. Instead of looking at the possibility of working together to solve common problems, he's saying all of your problems are the result of Communist Party infiltration of your local officials. Well, this is the kind of paranoia that the British deliberately create as psychological warfare, creating an enemy image to justify wars and massive defense budgets. Now we have another report that comes from Ben Norton in the Gray Zone on how British contractors are building support for the Syrian opposition, which means what? Islamic terrorists. They're building support for Al-Qaeda and ISIS, which by the way was getting a lot of support from the Obama administration that is the ISIS and Al-Qaeda terrorists, were being armed and trained by CIA and other mercenary agencies. Now, here's what Ben Norton reports, that there's an, a massive propaganda infrastructure in the United Kingdom that's being used to produce television footage, magazines, postcards and posters, uh, media contacts, a stream of propaganda designed to overthrow the Syrian government and designed to overthrow it on whose behalf? The Islamic Jihadists. He goes on to say that virtually every major Western corporate media outlet was influenced by the UK government funded disinformation campaign. This is funded through something called the Foreign and Commonwealth Office of the United Kingdom, uh, which created network link linkages between political movements and media outlets. One of these, the analysis research knowledge, which is in Dubai, uh, was set up as an NGO supposedly to help vulnerable Syrians affected by the civil war. Instead, it was a propaganda wing for the Free Syrian Army, which was the Al-Qaeda-influenced uh, jihadist forces that were butchering Christians uh, and uh, Jews, Muslims, and others. Uh, they ran the social media for the White Helmets, who repeatedly have lied that the Syrian government has used chemical weapons as a way of attacking the Syrian government. Uh, a contractor called the Global Strategy Network is directed by a former MI6 director of counterintelligence, and it says they have 97 video stringers, 23 photographers, 19 in-country trainers, eight training centers, three media officers, and 32 research officers who are promoting the line that the Assad government must go and be replaced by the so-called moderate rebels who are really Islamic terrorists. Now, when you hear something like this, the, the Pompeo presentation and this report on how a whole media enterprise has been set up to convince Americans that we have to go along with what Hillary Clinton wanted to do. No fly zones, overthrow the government of Syria, get rid of Assad, and, and allow the jihadists to take over. Well, now you see that this is a planned operation. And when President Trump says we want to withdraw from Syria, what do you have? You have people like Rubio, Cruz, Democrats like Menendez and Schumer and others join arms in opposition to withdrawing American troops who want to continue the funding of terrorists. This is why it's so difficult to get a breakthrough in the United States. But if you want to get a breakthrough, you have to do two things. One is you need to support the president to continue and expand the dialogue with foreign leaders, including President Putin and President Xi. 
We have disagreements, sure. That's why you have to talk. As Yitzhak Rabin famously said, you don't have to make peace treaties with your friends. You have to talk to your enemies. And this is where the Pompeo and the British propaganda operations are looking for the weak points, namely, can they manipulate Americans to allow for these wars to be continued? Now, remember, President Trump won his election in 2016 by calling for an end to these wars. Let me just finish by reminding you of the role of Sir Kim Darak, the former British ambassador to Washington, who sent memos to the Foreign Office talking about how Trump is insecure, inept, dysfunctional. His government doesn't function. There are knife fights in the cabinet meetings. He went on to say that how do we manipulate him? Praise him when he does something that we like, but we need a team of Trump whisperers telling him what he should do. That is, you go to his friends and manipulate them to manipulate the president. And finally, he said, it would be good if we could get him to launch a war against Syria, but it doesn't look like he'll do that. How much more explicit could it be? We're dealing with a war party. This is not something that the LaRouche movement invented. It's something that American patriots have known for a long time. Patriots of the left and the right, a non-interventionist faction which goes back to George Washington and the American Revolution. We need to have alliances for common interests, such as the League of Armed Neutrality, such as when the Russian Tsar helped support the North during the Civil War, the alliances that won World War I and World War II. But instead, we have people like Pompeo pushing for confrontation and geopolitical provocation in support of what? In support of a globalist neoliberal world order which makes the world more insecure because of poverty and fight over resources and keeps us engaged in wars where we lose men and women, we kill civilians, and we spend ourselves into oblivion. And who's behind this? That's the other point. We have to make it clear that this is not a, a made in America operation, but as the Gray Zone report shows on Syria, or for example, the infamous Christopher Steele and his dossier against Trump, which was at the heart of the beginning of Russiagate. Much of this comes from the British Empire and the city of London, which is totally integrated with the American financial establishment of Wall Street, who are bankrupt, but are insisting on free money from the Federal Reserve so they can stay in business while America is driven into a deeper and deeper bankruptcy. Now, tomorrow's Friday. I welcome your questions. Send me your questions at harleysch at gmail. Uh, and if you wish to send me a disagreement, do that. Maybe we'll take up some of the disagreements that people have. Because I do believe in dialogue. Lyndon LaRouche has always been committed to the idea that you can find the truth and make the truth the basis of policy, provided that you have a truth based on principle and natural law. So send me your questions. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining me today.